Hi guys, Dragon Arthur here. Um, today I'm with my mate House Ren, and we will be doing his infamous uh, Mad Olshe. Uh, 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 no, that's not fun. <laughs> that's because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll be fucking mad, bro, when you play against this. This is probably the best variant I've ever played against with the Um He 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 does know his shit. Um, so let's let's get you started, man. Okay, first up, three mu. Why three? Because I like to not have dead hands, and mu allows you to constantly special summon anything from your hand, especially this next guy. Gelato. Gelato at 3 is good, because he allows you to search any spell or trap card that's Medolce based. Well, a lot of people run him at 2, why do you run at 3? Because I like to have plays with Leviar and Invoker, because I play this as a combo based deck, not as a grind game. I like to be able to be able to do my combos when I want to do them. You get too many dead hands having 2, if you're running 2. You are 2 in your hand, you're two running 2. 2 in your two. hand and you can't search with Leviar or Invoker, so then you're pretty much, you know, you're dead searches, you can't, uh, you can't hoot cake into another gelato without ending up with your gelato back in the deck and that wastes an extra turn. So you want to, you, you run 3 because you want to make sure there's going to always be one in your, in your main deck. Yeah, I like to be able to ensure there's one to search for. Some games I've been stuck out and I've had, you know, one banished by accident and I miscalculated. And then I didn't have a play that turn because I ran out of targets in the deck. Uh, but I like three because, yeah, three, you get to search more often. Uh, next up, three hoot cake. Uh, nothing really to say here. Hoot cake just makes combos on his own. Special with Angeli. Yeah, especially with Angeli. Uh, also, you know, you got anything in the graveyard. Uh, previous exceeds from, you know, previous turns. You can just banish those. You got a gelato in there. You can banish that. Bring out uh, anything from your deck, pretty waste, much. Waste the max C during your first turn, just so you can use it. Yeah, pretty much. Like you can dump a max C. Like if you don't have any targets with Hoot Cake, you can like you can special him, and your opponent won't think you're gonna be able to use his combo. And then you just dump a max C, and then like they're like, "Well, I didn't suspect that," and you get a free summon off. Right? Does that mean you can run cards like Divine Wrath and Karma Cut in this? Yeah, you could like. You can go, oh look, I've got a Divine Wrath set, I'm just going to discard a card from my hand, and now you're minus one and I get a free search. No, nope. sure. it's not that bad. Uh, next up, three Majorlene, uh, just because... Maybe it's Majorlene. Maybe it's Major. Nah, Majorlene's good because she's the Stratos of the deck, she's a free search on summon, and you can Book of Moon her, keep her safe for a turn, and then search again next turn with a flip summon. Uh, nothing really extra to say about her. Um, and next up, favorite card of the deck, Angelly. They're expensive. So why do you run three Angelis? I run three Angelis because I can't run four. <laughs> Plain and simple. Yeah. If you could run four, I would run four, just because. You know she... what? You just you just run the whole deck as Angelly. Like, forty card, an, forty card Angelly, special Angelly. You probably Angelli. still win. Probably could, probably not. You wouldn't be able to search enough. But like. You could run, run more Angelis. I would run more just because she's so good with the combo of the deck. She's a plus two on her own. You, you normal her, your opponent can't stop your play. You get a hoot, you banish Angeli, and you get a gelato, and gelato is a free search. You Eef. get three on the board for one card from your hand. Haha, <laughs> you mad also, bro? Nah, just Angeli. Very Angeli. Uh, and to round off the monsters, I run two Maxis. Uh, I like Maxi in the current format just because a lot of decks special summon. There's a lot of uh, Medolce's floating around at our locals, and also Mouse. So you know you get a few searches off of that, or you can stop your opponent's play because they don't want you to get card advantage. Also, like I said earlier, you can free dump it for a hoot cake search. Uh, On to the spells. Look at your lolly mat. Yes, I like my mat. Very expensive. Okay, first up, two Chateau, just because Chateau's, in my opinion, the best field spell in the game at the moment. Hey, hey, now we'll ask the round table. Uh, okay. Hey, 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 okay, fine. Rainbow Roads are ruined. <laughs> Rainbow Ruins, yeah, for, um... Hey, hey, Christmas. Kaiser Coliseum, which is not a field spell, <laughs> but it should be. It should be, it's Kaiser's Coliseum. Uh, nah, two Chateau, just because it recycles everything in the deck. Mausoleum and the Emperor is a bloody field spell, why is Kaiser not? Yeah. Makes no fucking sense. Nah. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, Chateau is good because you can play it over the top of a Chateau and then you've got a target for um, Tiara. 
Uh, you can also just play it, recycle all of the Medolches in your graveyard back to your deck, just for the long drawn out grind games. Uh, next up, two ticket. A lot of people play one. I prefer two because if you've got one on the field, they missed it, it's harder to get it out. It takes too long to recycle it back into your deck because you have to tiara it back into the deck and then you have to search it out again. Whereas if you've got two, it only takes you one search and then you can uh, recycle the other one when you need to. So it's just a lot safer. It's a lot safer, yeah. Like especially if they get MST and then someone like Diddy Crow's... Can you Diddy Crow? Uh, Diddy Crow monster. Can you Diddy Crow? Uh, Diddy Crow is... No, yes. Diddy Crow is target one card. Oh, yeah. So you so can, so, yeah. yeah. So if you've only got one and it gets DD crow, you're kind of screwed because you've got no way to get ticket out of the banish zone. So I like two just because it's a lot safer and my deck has the room for it. Of course, everyone's all, almost everyone's running DD crow, especially at our locals. So yeah. Okay. Next up, Book of Moon. Book of Moon is one of my favorite uh, spell cards at the moment, just because it's got defensive and offensive plays. Yeah. Face down. Face down there. No, no, no. It's, it's Book of Moon. Done! Oh, damn it. Book of Moon. Set. Yep. Flip. Hey, look. <laughs> Special summon? Special summon. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, Book of Moon's good just because uh, it's safe or you can go aggressive with it. Uh, also, you can do plays with it and Majorline. Maybe it's Majorline. Uh, you can get free searches. Uh, <laughs> you Book of Moon and Majorline. <laughs> What's face down? Maybe it's Majorline. <laughs> Maybe it's Majorline, yeah. Uh, next up, you got... To Lance, I like Lance because it helps with comboing, keeps my uh, plays safe. Uh, you go Angeli, they try to get rid of it before you make a play, you Lance it, and they're minus one card, and you get your combo off. And you can show you've got an American one and an Australian one. Hey, hey, don't be hating, okay? I'm not, I'm not hating, I just like the Australian one more. Yes, we all like Australian cards more. Better print, better quality. Next up... Oh, dude, dude. Dude. You're going to have the American people to be upset about that. Oh, yeah. Next up... Three missed. Comment, comment, comment down below um, whether you think Australian cards or American cards are better. Yeah. And your reasons why. And your reasons why. Keeps posted. Uh, three missed just because back row hate and also helps get rid of lockdown cards. You can get rid of uh, like Kaiser Coliseums to make your plays. Um, Rivalry of the Warlords. Rivalry of the Warlords. <laughs> like, I just fucking hate that card so much. I just hate anything that stops me doing what I want to do. That's why I like Mist. Mist helps protect my stuff by getting rid of your stuff. And last card in the spell lineup, Instant Fusion. Now why do you run that? Because it helps with combos. Like I said, my deck's a combo deck. For a thousand life points, I can get a fusion monster that can help me continue my combo. If like what? What is this fusion like monster you talk about? These fusion monsters? Right here. Fusionist and Carbonola Warrior. Carbonola so, Warrior. That's a beast. So you can combo that with um, Messenger Lato. Messenger Lato. Yep. And it's also a level 3 Earth. It's a level 3 Earth monster and it's a beast type. So it combos well with the rest of the deck. Um, and Carbonella Warrior just because he's Earth rank 4. Um, I used to run... Rank 4? Level 4. Level 4. Sorry. Fusion should be ranks. Bring back the fusions. Yeah. Oh, they might come. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people playing Instant Fusion in different yeah. decks now. Yeah. yeah. These are the these are the two choice uh, fusion monsters I have. Uh, a lot of Madolche builds that do use Instant Fusion do specifically use these, mainly because they're Earth and Beast and Warrior. So what are they called again? Uh, Fusionist and Carbonara Warrior. <laughs> Carbonara Warrior. Carbonara Warrior. He... Car Carbonara. He needs bacon and... Um... Bacon and... Let's be honest, everyone needs bacon. Everyone loves bacon. And cream and eggs and... Mmm, now you're making me hungry. Hey, you're running the body deck that's all about puns on food and shit. I love food. Food's good. Okay, now another trap lineup. Uh, got your one-offs. He loves one food so much, he compulsively ejaculations. I mean, what? Compulsionary evacuation device, right? We both said it wrong. <laughs> we both did say it wrong. But yeah, compulse, it's good. Um, helps return extra deck monsters back to the deck. They minus a lot off of it. TT, one of my favourite trap cards at the moment, just because... I like where you played the TT too. <laughs> nah. Yeah, just, just under her TTs. <laughs> oh yeah. Nah, TT is good, because you're, if your opponent extends... You disgust me. <laughs> we disgust each other. TT stops, um, like, your opponent extends, and you can minus them a lot, which is really good. Uh, bottomless, just because uh, Soul Charge is pretty prevalent at the moment. 
Uh, if you're bottomless on a soul charge, you can come out pretty plus off of that. Because it'll kill like every single, every single one that they soul charge that has 1500 attack or more, and that can be killed off. Yeah, will get bottomless because it, it's uh, monster or monsters, so it's not a single target thing. It's just a single summon. That's thing. a single summon and soul charge, as we should all know by now, because it's been out long enough. Each summon is an indiv isn't an individual summon. They're all considered being summoned at the exact same time. Therefore, you can bottomless every single one of them. Also, a note on the Trench Tribute. If you destroy your own Medolce cards, you will not get their trigger search off. Which is good, because then you can hoot play next turn. Some tricky stuff has been done with that. Uh, next up... It's tricky to rock around, to rock around, that's right on time, it's tricky. It's tricky. Next up, Solemn Morning. Solemn Morning, just because... You disgust me. <laughs> you love it. Solemn Morning is good. 2k life points, you lose to stop a summon. Stops plays. Not even first dead. What the fuck is this? Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. I need to upgrade. At least, at least I've got a first dead bloody... What is it? Normal. Oh. No, I got a first dead you finish got a common chain. First dead chain. I had two first dead super lances and a first dead finish chain. And a first dead... Hey, rest of the next first dead. I have a first dead like Black Rose Ghost Dragon misprint, so... Like these guys. Deep Riz. One of my techs of choice. Why not Karma Cut? Because I like Deep Riz. Why not Karma Cut? Because I don't have Karma Cuts. <laughs> I can I have, give you some, but they're not I, shiny. I have Deep Riz. Deep Riz is good because it's a battle trap that gets over hands. Hands, as we all know, are pretty prevalent in the meta at the moment. Why not Karma Cut? Because I like Deep Riz. I like the artwork better. Uh. And I have them at the moment. So yeah, I like Deep Riz. Deep Riz is good. And a lot of people are running Deep Riz as well. So it must be pretty decent. Uh, next up, two trap stuns. That's why it's a two. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's a two. Two trap stuns because uh, I like to combo, as I said. This stops you from activating traps in response to my summons. So I can get my combos off when I want to. Uh, helps me extend where I know I wouldn't be safe. So then I can, uh, like, I can extend into a tiara while you've got back row and then minus your back row. Uh, next up, I run three chains. None of them are shiny. None of them need to be shiny because chain is expensive. Now, chain is good. I like chain in my Medolce build because I can make a weak play to get a good next turn play and still have the safety of you not being able to attack over me. Uh, whereas breakthrough skill doesn't allow that. I like breakthrough skill because it has multiple uses. You can use it against artifacts as well. But I just personally, in this build of my Medolce's, I like chain just because it stops attacks. And last but not least, Palooza. I only run one Palooza. Why do you run one Palooza and not two or three? And why do you run one instead of none? I run one Palooza over many because it is searchable and recyclable. On top of that, you don't want to be drawing into it early game because it's a dead draw. You don't have enough resources to capitalize on it. And mid game, if you haven't searched for it, it's more than likely you're going to draw into the one of than, say, if you've got none. The reason you don't want none in your deck is because you can't extend play. You can go Angelly and may, you know, affect Valor it, and then you can just go, well, sure, I'm just going to flip over my Palooza and continue my play anyway because you've got no back row. You can go Mew, and then they, you know, like, Valor the Mew, they break through the Mew, they finish chain your Mew, and then you just flip over Palooza and finish off your t OTK. I guess you could also, you could chain, you could play Trap Stun and chain Palooza. Yes. Because what would happen is, Palooza would go off, they can't respond immediately to summons because your the chain hasn't resolved yet, so then Trap Stun would go off, and the chain would resolve, and then, then they could attempt to try Bottomless or Trench Tribute. But at that point in time, Trap Stun's effect is then in play, which means they can't. Yep, that's exactly um, right. Like, you Trap Stun, and then you flip over Palooza in Chain, and they can't really do anything to stop that, because... What they could Warning it, they, or... But that's a... They that, could that, Warning, that, or they could, like... Dark could, Bribe, or White dark, Tap. Or dark Bribe, White Tap, Seven white tap Tools. Off. <laughs> but, like... White tap doesn't bother me because Palooza will just go back into the deck and then I can just search it out again next turn, right? So, like, you've got a combo there where you can just uh, trap stun into Palooza. Most of the time it's pretty safe. So you can get the combo off anyway. Uh, that's it for the main deck. Next up, I have my extra deck. Yay. Yay, extra deck. 
Uh, first up, two queens. Why is one ulti and one ultra? Because I like being different. Because you like the fact that the ulti is in first dead and the ultra is not. Yes, I want to get another ultra. Ulti. Oh, another ulti. It looks good, but at the same time, I like ultras. They're nice and simple. Doesn't distract from the card. Uh, There's not a lot of cards I honestly like in ultimate. Neither. Uh, but the reason I run two over three or one is just because uh, two, you can recycle them and it doesn't clog up your extra deck. Like, you can tiara, they get rid of one, you make a tiara next turn and then just add it to your extra deck again by <laughs> recycling it. You can chateau over your, you can chateau and it goes back anyway, so, like, they're easily recyclable themselves. Have you, have you ever needed to run three? There has never been a chance, uh, never been an instance where I've needed three because they recycle themselves. You can const if you know how to play the deck, and you play it well, you can recycle them enough that you only ever need to. Like, if you didn't need to constantly have one on the field to be in a commanding position of the duel, one would be fine because it's so easy to recycle. You can just chateau on top of having her in the graveyard, and she'll go back, and then you can just summon her again. But, like I said, two's good because she can recycle herself. Uh, next up... Wow. Well, they can recycle each other. Yeah, they can recycle that, but that yeah. can't recycle itself. Oh no! You can if you got one in grave and you have another one, you can send the other one back. So, like that's the only reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, next up, two Leviers. You uh, mad that I've got the ultra as well? Yes, I am mad that you have. You're so mad that all my shiny shit is better than mine. Your shiny shit is better than my shiny shit. Uh, Levier because, like it I said... It should be Ghost Rare, should but be it's not. It's not Ghost Rare, no. Levier because it's a combo part of the deck. Uh, you can go... It's part of the uh, mu Angeli combo. You go Mew into Angeli. Angeli tributes herself off to get Hoot Cake. Hoot Cake banishes Angeli to get Mess and Gelato. Then you overlay Mew and Hoot Cake to get Levier. And then Levier's effect to bring out um, Angeli. And then you overlay for Queen. That's part of the combo, and having two allows you to extend that combo many times throughout the duel, like twice. But you should only ever need to do it twice before you win, or you're going to win. Um, I only run one Invoker in this build, because, like I said, I'd rather be using the Levier combo. And they're expensive as fuck. And they're still expensive, yes. Um, it's funny, really, because people run Levier over that, and it's much cheaper. And nobody uses Invoker, like... No other deck I've seen uses it except for my Dolce's and maybe like a rogue MX deck, but I've never seen one anyway. Um, next up, I run one Heartland Draco. Reason I oh want. Oh god. Oh god. I'm gonna stop the video here. Why? <laughs> Why? I hate this card. Um, I run Noble Knights and they just. I have 2,000 life points left to go Heartland Draco and they just pa attack past my guy. I'm like, well, fuck you then. Good thing about him. You can swing over the top of things, extend OTKs, you know, you've, you're in a commanding position, they wipe your field, you make Heartland Draco swing over the top. He doesn't right? swing over the top, he swings past it. Well, yeah, he swings past it, like, he swings under it, or around it, whichever way you want to talk about it. Giggity. Giggity. Um, he's also good because if you've got a Chateau or Ticket on the field, which you should most likely always have, he can't be targeted for attacks, so he's a good body that stays on the field uh, and protects you. Next up... I have one Ragnar Zero. I have one Ragnar Zero simply because of the Madolce matchup. Well, the mirror, the Madolce mirror matchup. If you're in Bujins, a mirror, Noble, you don't really need to worry about Noble Knights or Bujins, to be honest. Yeah, like Bujins, like, I, I'm not fussed about Bujins. I can work around them that I don't need Ragnar Zero. Ragnar Zero is only there for mid, like the only reason I have it in here is for the mirror matchup, just because it's. Easy, like I have my Chateau on the field and I can play Ragnar Zero and pop their things and get a free draw. They've got theirs on the field, I can pop things and get a free draw. So it's good in the mirror matchup, and that's the only time I would probably ever make it unless I 100% needed it to win against another deck. Like Bujins, uh, maybe against Hats if they've got. Um... Hats don't even use anything that increases attack. What am I talking about? Um, next up... Well, I guess, I guess if they lanced it, you could fuck them up over yeah. a lance. Yeah, if they lanced something, <laughs> I could Ragnar Zero there, uh, whatever they lance, that would be pretty funny. That would be hilarious, because it they're like, be oh, it's safe, and it's like, quick safe. effect, Ragnar Zero. Ragnar Zero, boom, and then I get a plus one, awesome. Uh, 
Oh, you draw as well, so it's actually yeah, two. Yeah, plus one. You know. Next up, Cowboy. Cowboy's good. You know, he helps finish games. Uh, that's the only reason I would ever make Cowboy. Like, he's, as a finisher, he does nothing else for me, really. I've never used him for anything else except for finishing. One, <laughs> funny story, one game... <laughs> one game <laughs> is it 500 <laughs> and then yeah I could have made cowboy didn't have cowboy I fucking I go into Caliburn next turn <laughs> back to 2000 health like the turn after is like fuck <laughs> yeah and I'm like I wish I had a cowboy I wish I had a cowboy then because then I could have just done it. um next up Abyss I'm Dweller the rock and roll <laughs> that yes. looks very mighty similar to the one that I used in my my deck profile. That would be because it's my Abyss Dweller. <laughs> because my one still hasn't come in yet. Yes. No, Abyss Dweller, just because it's stated in a previous video, Abyss Dweller's good, helps stop everything in graveyard effects. you got Bujins. Um... Luckily it doesn't touch your graveyard either. No, it doesn't. Opponents. No, it's opponents only, which is good, because I can still use my no. effects. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it uh, stops mirror matchups as well, so if I'm against another Medolce deck, I can make an Abyss Dweller, stops their effects. Um, and against Bujins as well. This is one of my main cards I would use against a Bujin matchup if I'm in a losing position. Uh, next up. Wait, wait for it. Wait, wait for it. it. You gotta put it down first. Oh, it's Boom. the awesome name card. Yep. Carnagorn. Carnagorongorongorong. Kind of Whatever his name is. Khan anti Gorgon, anti luminescent knight. knight. I just like it because he's anti luminescent and he has blonde hair. Um. He's good, just because you can stop things uh, from targeting your stuff. You know, you got mists, uh, your opponent tries to land something, you... Uh, if your opponent tries to land something, uh, you can redirect it. So, if they try to lance your uh, monster during battle step, you can just change it, change it to theirs instead of yours. So then they're going minus, they're minus two from the battle. Uh, that's about it. I haven't made him much lately, but I can see his use in the future. Uh, one of the cards I'm trying out that I got recently that I haven't been able to play test yet would be number 80, Rhapsody in Berserk. He has some potential uses. I haven't had to use him yet, but I would like to test him out in future duels just because you can banish two in your opponent's graveyard, especially key cards. And then you can attach him as an equip and give 1,200 attack points. That can make your queen really hard to beat over. And at the same time, your queen will be able to beat over pretty much anything she comes up against. Which would be fun, and I want to try it out a bit more in the future. Uh, next up, Equipped Engineer. Only reason I run this is for protection. What the hell does this card do, anyway? Uh, once per turn, during either player's turn, I can detach one XYZ material from this card. Uh, then target one face-up attack position. Note it says face-up attack. You can't do it on face-up defense positions. Uh, any face-up attack position monster I control and change it to face-up defense position. And if I do, or if you do, it cannot be destroyed by, uh, by, by battle or by card effects this turn. So that can help protect your queen. Anything else you've got out, like even itself, you can stall with it. You can go... Mew Hoot Cake or Hoot Cake banish something into Mew, make this and stall until you get your combo pieces to continue the duel. He's good. I've used him on numerous occasions and he's actually saved my ass quite a few times. And the last card would be number 30, Acid Golem. I still say this card's shit, but... It is a shit card. The only reason it is in here is for the 3k beat stick. That is all. What, what's, what's the card that you had problems with the other day? Which I have not heard of people running for quite a while. Yes, it's it was a rogue deck at a tawny. It was, um, what was it again? Herald of Perfection, I believe. Yeah, Herald of Perfection, that guy. Which, uh, what, what does he... I'm going to look him up, actually. I forgot what he does. Pretty much, you can discard at any stage that your opponent activates any effect spell trap monster effect you can chain his effect to that discard one fairy card negate and destroy that card which pretty much screws over any deck I'm not gonna lie pretty good rogue card right there um so yeah this guy busted it out at a locals and he's all like 
yeah, 2.8k 2, 2. defense. The Dolce's can't beat over it because our highest thing is 2.7. You try and activate something to get over it. And, yeah, he's just going to be all like, nope, because I've got seven cards in my hand. During other players' turn, when your opponent activates a spell trap or monster effect, you can send one fairy monster from your hand to the grave, negate the activation, and if you destroy it, far out. Yep. Like I said, pretty good <laughs> anti-meta card right there. And it's pretty if, good because it's also twenty-eight defense, and they can't. Not many. It'll, it'll still it'll sit in defense. Yeah. And you can't like, you can you, you can't exit on it because they just yeah. get rid of it. It's just gonna you negate the effect. You, you can't, can't steal you it. You can't do anything if they've got valid targets in their hand to this card. And he was playing a spirit variation where he pretty much always had fairies in his hand. So, like I said, the only reason golem's in there is so I can make golem and beat over it. The only reason I've got it in here now. I used to run it just because of the fact that it was 3k beat stick and I could get over big things, but I took it out because I had no room. It's back in there now because of Herald's Perfection. Only reason. And then last two, uh, my two fusions, we've already gone over those. Carbonara Warrior. Carbonara Warrior. Carbonara Warrior will win games. Okay, now on to my side deck. My side deck is only 14 at the moment because I'm still testing some stuff out. You know, like, you don't always need 15 in your side deck. You just need the cards that you want to be trying out to out your opponents. Uh, first up, just because I like surprising people with uh, her turn in game 2 or 3, Pudding Sis. Pudding Sis is good. Pudding Sis, after you go, you go Angeli, tribute her off to make a Pudding Sis. Pudding Sis can swing into something big. Sure, you lose a bit of life points. But she doesn't die, and then you can pop something on the field, or you can swing into something small, kill that off, and then after the at, during the end of the battle step, you pop something else. Not gonna lie, pretty good for outing your opponent in clutch situations, and it comes as a surprise factor. People don't expect it. Uh, next up, two DD Crow because DD Crow is pretty boss at the moment. Everyone runs it in the sideboard. Everyone runs it sideboard. I would run it mainboard, but I like Maxi mainboard just because I can ditch Maxi on my turn. Or I can use it in my opponent's turn to get massive card advantage if I know they're going to be specialing a lot. Well, Maxi you can do first turn because Diddy Crow yeah. you can't do during your first turn unless, of course, they've gone first. So you can't do it first turn in general. Yeah, so it's like if you had a Diddy Crow and you were going first. Or you can't really ditch it because there's no valid target. That's why Maxi is a bit better, in my opinion, if you want to go for the combo base deck. Uh, next up... Here's something that looks nice, even though it's not first head. Two Veilers. I used the main Veiler. Yes, Veiler. Veiler is good. I like Veiler, but I don't run a main board because I like running my Maxi's main board now. Uh, I would run both Veiler and Maxi's, so two of each main board, but I just haven't found the room for them yet. Maybe in the future, but not right now. Uh, next card, my third Maxi. Never know when you might need a third one. Uh, you go up against rulers, you go up against mirror matchups. You're going to want a third one because there's a lot of special going on there. You can plus pretty heavily. Special summon. What? Special summon. Special summon. Uh, next up, Swift Scarecrow. Just because I don't like being OTK'd. Who the fuck plays that? Me, because I don't Can't like being OTK'd. Swift Scarecrow... Saved me a couple of times. A couple of times I've sighted him. Haven't seen him. Debunk. Guess what? You're getting FTK now. Yeah. But you know, like, Swiss Scarecrow is good. He has his uses. That's why I have one of him in the sideboard. Uh, next up, two card cardies. You used to mainboard that. Why don't you do that anymore? I used to mainboard this because it allowed for digging. I used to run this pre-prio, so without Angeli. But now that Angeli's in the deck, you don't need to dig as deep for your combo pieces because you have more main board combos. Uh, the only reason I would side this in is if I'm against a very heavy control deck where I need to dig deep. And balls deep. Balls deep, dig no. Deep. Dig deep and search for combo pieces while being relatively safe. And also, at the same time, uh, people veil a card cars. I don't know why, but you play a card car and people sometimes veil it just because they don't want you to get the plus two. And then, you know... Oh, like, but you still get it anyway because you tribute it. Yeah, like I don't oh, know. Right. Or is no, no. it's not a face-up card. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, work. Doesn't work. Like if if you played the second effect of a um, 
that you even though you can't the second effect of breakthrough skill would, st- would stop it yeah but you can't you can't but yeah. like like I said card cars good in combo decks like this especially when you're up against uh, control decks just because it allows you to search as well just a bit on ruling um, the reason why you can't veil a card card D is because well you can veil him but he's going to get the effect off because once he's tributed off Vela no longer has a valid target of a face-up monster they control. Um, and because he's tributed and he's sent to the grave, Vela can no longer negate his effects because he's no longer a face-up monster on the field. Uh, the same thing works with like Stardust and uh, Skill Drain. Because when Stardust tributes itself off, um, it is no longer a face-up in the field to be negated from Skill Drain. Because you, it doesn't stop you activating the card. It just stops the uh, effects of the face up monster in the field. It also works with um, with um, Black Lance a lot in Noble Knights, where you can tribute him or himself off um, to get a search, and they can't really veil that. They can veil you tributing something else off, but not himself, because once he's gone, there's no longer a valid target for Skill Drain or Valor to stop him. His and effect going off. his effect will resolve because it's it, off the field. It also doesn't activate in the graveyard. It does activate on the field, but just the card isn't on field anymore. Hmm. Uh, next card in my sideboard, one dark hole, just because you can only run one. Dick hole. Dick hole. Dark hole. I have had a couple times where it's come in handy. Uh, I don't. I can't remember who it was against. Ah, uh, that's right. It was against agents. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had two. <laughs> I had two pot of dualities in my main board. In game one, didn't find my second one and realized it didn't come in handy, so I sided out one for a dark hole. Right, the card that won me the game was dark hole. Dick I used hole. it to board wipe because dick hole, dick hole it was a dick move. Dick I used hole. dark hole, <laughs> dick hole, dark hole, dick board... hole. Shut up. <laughs> I used dark hole, board dick wipe, hole. and ended up winning the game. If that Dark Hole Dick was hole. a pot of duality, I wouldn't have been able to win that game there, and I would have lost the round. Dick Hole. So, I like Dark Hole. Dick Hole. We're moving on. <laughs> Next up, Two Mirror... I digress. I digress. Two Mirror Force. I still like Mirror Force as a card, but at the moment, it for is out board, of metal. It is out it of metal. It is so the, out of meta right now. It is now. so out of the meta right now. It is not funny. That's why I'm meaning to Depris instead of Mirror Force. It's so out of the meta that bloody Sinister Serpent makes it look... <laughs> Makes sense the serpent look new. It does. Now, Mirror Force, it is good. Situational card right now because it's so out of the meta. Um, like, I still like the card. It's good for massive board wipes. If your opponent has no protection, that's about it. And last two cards in my 14 card sideboard two Black Horns. 14 card? Why not 15? Because I haven't found enough cards to put in there. I'm probably. Soul Drain! Soul Drain, yeah, probably. Where's my well, Soul Drain? Soul Drain, somewhere around here. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Okay, let's just say... Soul Drain. 15th card, know. Soul Drain. Um, so yeah, Black Horn of Heaven is good. Everyone knows why. Stop Special Summons I and it's Camp Trap. Pretty good right there. I need one of them. You do need one of them, but I've got two Ultras and I'm not parting with them. Fag. And one's a, one's a miscut too. One is a miscut. Pretty heavily miscut, as you can notice. Look probably at the not. Bo- not, look not so bo- much, but... Not so much, but if you look at the bottom, there's a slight... Uh, Slight difference. It's between. more of the top, which is more obvious. Yeah, the top's more obvious. It's very, very short cut compared to the uh, regular cut. So, you know, I like Miss Cuts, Miss Prints. They're all pretty cool. I got a Miss Print MST. It's pretty nice. So, yeah, that wraps up the sideboard as well. You also like magic cards too. I do like magic cards. Where's my magic card? Damn it, it's not here. We'll preview that later. Right. Okay. That's... Dragon Arthur and House Rand out. So, yeah.